So let's take a look at some fancy drones, horror tanks and mech suits, some high-tech scavengers and their war machines, and a rather spectacular orc pirate ship. In this one we're taking a look at 14 different army ranges for all your grimdark wargaming needs. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing another model roundup of grimdark miniatures, taking a look at a bunch of different creators from around the community and some of their awesome miniature ranges. I've done a couple of compilation videos similar to this in the past, and the idea behind this one is to take a look at a few miniatures that could be used in multiple different gaming systems from other creators out there in the community. There is a bit of a cottage industry of people making miniatures that could be compatible with different war games, Warhammer being one of them of course, but not necessarily any more so than other things out there like Grim Dark Future, or any other sci-fi war game made by any other creator. The idea is that these make legally distinct miniatures that aren't infringing on any one person's IP, but maybe have enough of the theming and feel of certain armies they could do well for certain stand-ins. As with last time, I was very keen to do this video right and not overshare things that some creators might not want to have put on YouTube. So for everything featured today, I've taken the time to contact creators either now or in the past to make sure that they are happy for their miniatures to be talked about in videos such as this one. Anyone who didn't fancy having their creations shared didn't get included. The makers here are happy that their designs are safe from any form of legal retribution or anything like that. And if at any point they should happen to change their mind, then feel free to just contact me and I can clip out the section if you don't feel like it being in the video. Definitely a subject that needs to be approached with a little bit of caution, but also one that's worth talking about just so hobbyists out there know that all these cool designs exist, which often don't get as widely talked about in the mainstream. As with a couple of the other 3D printing videos, this one sponsored by Elegoo once more, one of the absolute leading brands of 3D printers for people who like to use them for wargaming purposes, and they've basically got a sale on at the moment at around about 20% off their normal marked prices on their web store, as will be links down in the video description. They sponsor the content by sending me a Marsfire 3D printer, so a big thank you for that. And while other brands of 3D printer exist, they're one that I've got no hesitation in recommending. Perhaps one of the most common types of 3D printers used for wargaming, and as with their recent updated range for this year, they seem to be improving things all the time. As per last time, I'll just talk through a few of their most commonly used options for wargaming purposes, and if you did want to pick up anything at all, then there's an affiliate link down in the video description for them. That does help to support all specs tactics a little bit on anything bought through it, if you should have a mind to. Their newest offerings that they're promoting at the moment are the Mars 5 printer and the Mars 5 Ultra. Basically this is the latest generation of their entry level resin 3D printer. These are the ones that are supposed to be an affordable entry place to the market if you're on a tight budget. And certainly compared with some plastic manufacturers, it does mean that you could save a whole load of money in the long run, at least in terms of some core cool miniatures printed like the ones that we'll talk about in the video. At time of recording it's marked at $180 or £156, currently on pre-order at the moment to arrive in September, though they still do have similarly priced things like their Mars 4. The Mars series are the sort of smallish build volume ones. These ones are 15 by 8 by 165 centimeters, so a few things might need to be printed in multiple batches or chunks for bigger monsters and vehicles and things like that, but it really is very doable. The XY resolution is absolutely fine for the vast majority of wargaming purposes, but given that this one's the entry level one, a few of their others are a bit better. It's certainly been improving a lot year on year, with even their entry level ones being genuinely very impressive now. At the same time, they're also bringing out the Mars 5 Ultra. This one's £230 or $270. The website estimating this will be shipping out around about August the 12th. It is significantly more than the other one, though comes with a bunch of more luxury features, I suppose. 9K resolution and a much smaller pixel XY resolution at 0.018, generally considered to be easily enough for fine detail characters and things. The other bonus of this one versus the base model are a Wi-Fi connection, so less dependence on USBs and things, a camera system to sense fails and problems mid-print, and you can also record time-lapse shots that is kind of cool, I guess and their tilt release thing that they've got going on with their Saturn 4 Ultra one. Talking of which, they still have their Saturn range on the go. The Saturn 3 still appears to be on sale, and this one I still consider an absolutely amazing entry-level 3D printer for people, $293 at time of recording with that sale on, and basically just a bigger build volume at 21 by 12 by 25 That can be pretty handy if you're wanting to be printing off entire squads or bigger vehicles and things. For me, I'd say that is probably worth the extra investment if you do have the money to spare, but it depends exactly what your purposes are for the printer or your budget available. 
Again, this one's got pretty awesome XY resolution as well, and it's just a good all-rounder. Then they've got the Saturn IV Ultra, currently on pre-order as well. This one's a bit more, and again, has the same sort of advantages as the Mars Ultra one, which has the camera, the leveling things, and a theoretically faster print mode. And they do do the FDM type printers as well, the ones that are a bit more useful for bigger things like maybe giant super heavy type miniatures or terrain pieces, ones where maybe the individual layer lines aren't quite as big a deal compared with more fine infantry models and things. They're not too dissimilar in price compared with the Mars ones for a much bigger build volume, so it could be handy with mass producing terrain or similar. As always, all the usual caveats for 3D printing things apply. You've got to do it safely, don't get the resin on you as it's poisonous, and you need the right location to set it up somewhere where you're not going to be inhaling fumes. It can take a little bit of time and troubleshooting to get set up, though it's very satisfying when you get things running. And bear in mind there might be occasions where 3D printed models might not be as appropriate, maybe in some wargaming stores and tournaments and things. They're definitely a pretty powerful tool to have in the arsenal, particularly with all these cool designs out there. In any case, feel free to check out the Elegoo links in the video description if you're interested in picking up a printer. As mentioned, they're around about 20% off currently. And while they do have regular sales, it does look like that's a genuine decrease compared with last time I made this video. Let's get into some model armies proper though, and talk through a whole bunch of different ranges from a bunch of different creators. First up, we have one of the ranges from Station Forge called the Socrates, found on Station Forge's Patreon and My Mini Factory. These are some chunky exo armored elites, humans in big armor with pauldrons, and they've got quite a few different ranges of infantry types available. Here are the Socrates Exterminators, armed with energy weapons, pretty cool long barreled rifles with energy cords attached there. And then on the right, they've got a big range of all sorts of things they call Socrates Reverends, looking at all very faithful, holy and dogmatic, with robes and books, a great big hourglass, and one of them's got a jetpack on, and could make some pretty awesome characters. Then for a bit of heavy support, we've got a Socrates Dreadstorm, a massive great big exo armoured super suit there. That has a fair bit of customizable options between rocket launchers and things on the top, a Gatling gun versus an energy weapon, and a great big talent melee weapon on the right. Finally, we've got a character miniature in the Socrates Archon, looking all very Roman and holy there with a laurel wreath, and seems that he comes with really quite a good choice of poses and head swaps. I do quite like the Station Forge miniatures, all looking very clean and sleek, and the way that they present them on their selling pages I think is very nice, actually really gives you a good idea of what you're getting. Another range that I've been asked to feature a couple of times before on the channel now are the excellent suits with a variety of fish related names from Piper Makes. They seem great for any of your mecha or Gundam type needs. Her miniatures include these all very stealthy suits on the left here. Some nice options for having their energy weapons either mounted in one arm or carried in two arms, plus a few hovering drone things around. There's some pretty epic mid sized mech suits here on the right. I quite like the one with the sort of fixed wing jetpack. That looks like quite a fun dynamic one. And there's one that's got the option for some back mounted guns plus a couple of really big energy blades which I think it looks really nice. For some other in flight jetpack type infantry, these guys are some smaller mech suits with some pretty fun circular thruster things mounted on the jetpack. Apparently these ones designated the Ordinata class aerial combat mech. It looks like they come with some alternative options if you like some different pattern thrusters on the jetpacks. Lots and lots of other stuff beyond that though. Some sleek hover anti-gravity type tanks, packing some futuristic guns, and some heavily armoured walking drones, packing some heavy firepower. These are found on the Piper Makes Patreon, and also looks like they're available at Gobford and printed war games for some physical print miniatures. Next up we have an army called the Lunar Auxilia by That Evil One, an army of armoured humans in space, with a fair few fun variations, including some troopers mounted with gun emplacements here. Fairly sturdy looking riveted blast shields to deflect enemy fire. I also quite enjoyed these quad bite outriders armed with lances or axes. Could be quite nice to represent some fast units there. Interesting idea comboing the lances with the more modern bike technology. Otherwise they've got really quite a lot of patterns of various infantry miniatures, lots of choice of weapon types to arm them with, and some quite nice sinister heavily armoured helms. They do have some drop troopers as well for some jetpack style troopers fighting from the sky. These ones seeming to be armed with laser weapons. There's plenty more than that though, including this with some infantry transport and some interesting things called torrent ogres. They look like they've got some slightly Bioshock vibes there. I quite like their fairly vicious looking triangular angled shields. 
They're found on their My Mini Factory page, as well as Patreon and Only Games for some physical prints if you want them. Next up, I thought I'd throw in the Channel Army that Mr. Spiros from Across the Legions has been building, taking some hints and designs from channel viewers. These guys are the Iron Enforcers, a militant police force from the distant future. Very chunky, heavily armed bruisers with a mix of laser weapons and all sorts of special weapons, including a flamethrower. The initial offering for them this month is the Patrolman Squad, 40 miniatures, including a variety of special weapons, and they're available in one of two ways, either via the subscription on Thangs with new miniatures out each month, currently it's $7 for the STLs with the code ATL30, or $28 printed from Wargame Portal, I'll leave the link to that one down in the video description. I've been enjoying painting up a few of these miniatures myself. Here are a few examples of some of the guys armed with the standard laser submachine guns, including the squad medic. As you can see, there's a few different options for heads here, and they're all ready to dispense a bit of justice with the batons, should they be feeling in a lenient mood. Here are a few examples of the special weapon troopers. Here you can see a couple of energy weapons on the left, and a grenade launcher on the right, should they happen to run into some more serious militant opposition. Finally, the squad sergeant is fairly customizable. A choice of different melee and ranged weapons, so a bit more choice of which particular flavour of justice he wants to dispense there. As with all the rest of the creators in the video, they'll also be featured down in the video description as well, feel free to check them out. Next up though, we're on to Station Forge once more, and I thought I'd feature their Pythonicus miniatures, great big titanic corrupted and twisted walkers, the one on the left in the Pythonicus Defender Mark II, that one's a super flexible 3D printed kit, having all sorts of different options to represent different styles of great big warped robots, a whole ton of different head swaps, some different carapace weapons, and a fairly massive choice of close combat and big guns, depending on the flavour of big walker that you want to field, should have most eventualities covered there. There's then the slightly smaller auxiliary type war mechs on the right, gatling guns or big energy weapons, or a rather cool and brutal looking axe with the choice between that or a saw blade type thing, and again a big choice of heads if you don't like this rather sinister looking bog-eyed goat one. They're found on their Patreon page and my mini factory. Moving on and we've got some more exo-armoured infantry with the Iron Crusaders by Gear Guts. They can be found on their Patreon page or GearGutsMechShop.com. I do quite like the heavily armoured infantry with the breacher shields, they look really quite cool. Wouldn't fancy getting into a gunfight with those guys, I don't think much is going to get through. And otherwise they have some bikers with dual ranged weapons mounted on either side of the bike chassis. Really quite big thick tyres there. They've got a few different variants of infantry as well. These Annihilation Champions on the left here have some shoulder mounted missile launchers. Not compromising on the firepower with both a ranged and a melee weapon hand in hand as well. And they have some squads of specialist infantry as well like these fusion troops armed with energy weapons. They do have a couple of bigger miniatures on offer as well, including this Iron Crusader tank, a chunky creation to deliver the troops into battle, and the Iron Crusader vault mech, a bunch of different customised options available, this one ready to bring the fight to the enemy at long range. Next up, and perhaps one of the most spectacular 3D printed centerpiece type models I've seen, is this Kraken ship made by Mecha Miniatures. This is from their range of nautical orcs, and you can find them on their My Mini Factory page, Patreon, and Colts 3D. This one is a kind of mad and absolutely enormous big ship, as we'll see in a second they've got a fair few more medium sized sailing ships to be coasting their way around the battlefield, but this one basically has an enormous great big kraken monster holding up a pirate ship all covered in guns, or crew manning a bunch of the guns from the upper decks. They've got really quite a lot of design choice for all your primitive alien forces needs, big chomper on the left here, is an enormous creature, has a nice howder built in scrap with a great big gun out the top. Looks like a fun war beast for the troops to ride to battle, and here are some mega armoured orcs on the right, complete with swords, claws, and guns all welded together. I quite like the one that's just got the ludicrous Gatling gun creation, feeding the belt fed bullets into that with his claw hands. Otherwise, there's some big mechanics. I quite like the one who seems to be firing out a whole vat full of sharks, that seems very on theme with all the nautical things. I do really like the fun captain guy in that menacing pose with a great big claw, or henched over a war trike with some very big spiked wheels, though I think that thing needs a few more exhausts welded on probably. Probably my favourite thing about this range though are the awesome ships, just really quite fun to be sailing some orc pirate ships around the board, Dakila ship is on the left, complete with big cannons, a great big harpoon, and the sails and totem pole all look really awesome, another pretty massive great big centrepiece kit there for you. And then there's a smaller pirate ship design 
maybe a bit more of an outrider to be sailing across the battlefield, this one mounting a fond front mounted Gatling gun. Next up, for an army that I've featured really quite a long time in the past, I thought I'd return to reshare the Primal Hounds by Grey Tide Studio. They're found on their website and My Mini Factory, and they told me that the discount code Grey Tide All Specs should still work for their My Mini Factory page. That's the one that I used when I did a sponsored video for them another time. The offering on these ones are more sort of upgrade bits for other ranges, any sort of exosuited power armoured models might do. And the idea here is to give them a bit more of a space viking type theme. Here's an example with a lot of their parts on a Games Workshop miniature, listed over on their website. They do have a big central pack offering where you can get everything all at once, but if you just wanted some specific bits, they have a bunch of smaller offerings, say if you just wanted some runic jet packs, or some close combat powered fist weapons, again these ones sporting some more runes, or some skulls, or the occasional wolf's head. Another fun thing that they have is a kit called Ancient Armour, Again, that one could be used for some big walker type models to give them a lot more theme. Mounting things like stylized shields, a great beast pelt over the left shoulder, and inlaid with some bones and runic charms and things. They're also available via Godforge and only games for physical prints as well. Next up, we have a range of All Very Holy Warrior Nuns from Dakadaka.store. On the left, we've got some robed warriors bearing heavy firepower, great big solid shot and flamethrower weapons on offer. I really quite like their design for the Sisters of Redemption. I think the shield designs on them are pretty top notch. and look like they're ready to put a bit of smack down with their maces. I think their half helms are quite cool as well. Otherwise, for a few other tastes of their range, there's a character miniature with the curious name of Sister of Great Guilt. Does look like quite a fun little leader miniature though. There's a squad of biker sisters armed with some solid shot type weapons on both sides of the handlebars, plus a few pistols and close combat weapons thrown in as well. The billowing capes behind them, I think, are all rather fun. And they do have a few bigger and chunkier miniatures in their range as well. The Order of Repentance APC has a lot of fancy stylings. And I do like the embossed details on the front and front sides of the tank. It's got the option for missile launchers and sponsons if desired. There's also the creepy and sinister looking walker of the Iron Pain engine. This one has a chainsaw, some flails and guns and flamethrowers, I'm sure that's going to make a mess when it charges in. Their things are found on their own website and my mini factory, plus Etsy and Only Games for some physical print miniatures. Another range I found really quite fun was the Cheese Stealer Cult by That Evil One. Here we've got a cult of twisted rat men in space, one of the main unit offerings being this big horde of rat men vermin, equipped with some armoured helms to protect those whiskers no doubt. I do quite like the shot of them all painted up here with the glowing green effects. Probably my favourite themed thing on their range though were these cult tunnel riders. It certainly makes sense to my mind that if you've got rat men going around the battlefield, they're going to want to do so in a great big hamster wheel. So why not mechanise the process to make some bikers? These guys have a mix of melee weapons, shotguns, saws, and there's a leader one with a sniper rifle. There's a good few other character style miniatures in the range though, like that slave overseer and an interesting striding walker thing called a cult weird lancer. Overall looks really fun to me, I like the rats in space type vibe. You can find the designs on their My Mini Factory, Patreon and Only Games for some physical prints. Next up we've got some bruisers by Gear Guts, big chunky and violent and welding things together with a whole load of scrap. They've got some mini walkers here on the left, these ones armed with a bunch of flamethrowers, some nice variations on the design there, you get three quite different ones all covered in rivets. And there's plenty of flavours of various infantry squads. Here's some bruiser assault gunners with some ranged weapons. Otherwise, with some smaller runs to add to the force, I thought it was interesting that there's some Timbot Goblin gunners here. Always good to cobble together a bit of robot infantry for the hordes. On the right, we have some massive hulky elites with the Bruiser Prime shield bearers. I think that the riveted rounded shields and them look really quite striking. You're not going to be getting through that level of armour in a hurry. I've got some fun chain blade weapons as their way to attack you. Then for a couple of bigger models, we've got the Bulldogosaur on the left here. A hulking great brute of a thing with a great big steely underbite. Plenty of room for some infantry to hang out on the top with that great big gun as well. And then a chunky big bellied mech baby. Seems like there's lots and lots of exact variants of those ones on offer. This is variant H. It's equipped with a great big massive saw with a big cannon and Gatling gun to back it up. Next up, I did feature one of these in a previous video, but I thought I'd check back to take a look at the Eldar Exiles by Across the Realms. 
I must admit, I really do enjoy these exotic Space Elf Dino Riders. A great sense of motion with them, and a really interesting blend of technology, elven trappings, and a sort of cult tribalist type nature. I think the one on the left in the running pose is perhaps a particularly impressive one, offering a great big laser gatling blaster type thing to gun down the enemy. There's two other designs in the squad as well, one with a big gun and one with a mighty lance who's sort of rearing up. Really quite fun miniatures all in all. Otherwise they've got some on-foot infantry to go alongside. Again I do quite like the fun mix of sort of technological and animal natural type trappings. The helms in particular I think are interesting for that. Kind of futuristic helms with sort of an animalistic cat-like sort of face. They've got some ranged and melee weapon versions of these, and feel like they could be good for a fair few space elf purposes. Finally, if you need a bit of big heavy support, you call in the really big space diner. This one comes with a cockpit with a great big laser weapon on it. Interestingly, a couple of propellers on the side. I'm not sure if the idea is that they propel it off the ground in some way. Maybe they help him jump about a bit, or perhaps that's just to try and keep the whole cockpit thing stabilised while the massive dinosaur thing does its thing down on the ground. Kind of fun how modular this one is as well. Looks like you basically can get the dinosaur completely without any bits on if you want it, and then add on as much as you want. Next up we've got a range from Crimson Steel Mechworks, a pretty interesting range of power armoured things. There's quite a few different designs, large and small, and feels like they could fit the purposes of a whole bunch of different armies, rather than maybe skewing to any one thing too heavily. One of their base squads is this Nyx power armour unit. It looks like these extra armoured troopers are just ridiculously modular, They've really gone heavy on basically being able to customise the choice of weapons and heads and things literally every which way. You can see just how many choice of guns there are here on the right, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. If you really wanted them to be armed with any one of this look of gun, then I guess you could print it multiple times. But there's enough near variance that you could have a fair bit of variation with the squad still looking like it's basically armed with the same weapon. There's a fairly similar level of options for the other body parts. Otherwise they've got a variant on that same armour called the Nyx Space Type. This one's equipped with some jump packs and jet packs. And again it looks like modularity is the order of the day there. A big choice of different jet thrusters from single big intake things to dual intake ones and rounded propeller ones to suit your needs. And then a fairly similar level of different options beyond that. One of their centrepiece kits is this Charon Dropship. A pretty massive affair. You can see how that dwarfs the infantry down there. Looks like that would be a pretty spectacular big centerpiece type model. Again, it's got a few different options as well. You can have it with the quad thruster type thing on the left, a whole load of propeller equipped things on the right, and you can have it assembled so it's sort of landed or have it hovering. Quite a cool little miniature range, that one. They're found on their Mind Mini Factory, their own website, and Kickstarter. Lastly, for major army ranges I wanted to feature today, here are the Scavengers by Station Forge, one that I wanted to mention in a previous video on the channel. I wasn't able to get confirmation from Station Forge that it's good to feature them before that one, but now they're back for this one. These ones look like a faction of futuristic technology scavengers. I think one of my favourite miniatures in their range is this one, the Scavenger Heavy Tank. Basically a great big six-legged walking thing, mounting really quite a cool twin turret. It looks like a bit of a walking fortress bunker to lay the smack down on the enemy's elites. Otherwise they've got some big automata droid things called these Droitex Mark III. This one comes with a controller and a few big heavy suited robots to lay the smack down on the enemy. I've got quite a few choices of characters too. There's a scavenger ball gator here and a scavenger scrapper. I like the way that he seems to have recovered part of his fallen comrades in that crane machine thing that he's got going on. No doubt ready to put them back together and send the creations back into the battlefield once and again. I also quite enjoyed this scavenger alpha rider. Looking like a bit of a techno dinosaur style creation, with a rider on the back mounting a big gun. And I've got a really good amount of choice for the rank and file, like these scavenger raiders, armed with some sinister hoods, long rifles, and bulging fisheye lenses. Finally, there's more armoured vehicles, such as this scavenger tank, a bit of a smaller crab style tank. That one looks a lot more like a walking emplacement for a truly massive gun on top, and some fun robed cultists as well, carrying sensors and incense about, and one has a big banner. Could be a command squad of sorts. Finally, it's just one aside that I came across while making the video. I got the chance to have a discussion with the owner of a website called Godforge, and you can find them on their website, godforgeminis.com. One of the major stumbling blocks to getting 3D printed minutes on the table is actually having one yourself and owning one, and having enough space and time to run it. It's something that lots of people enjoy, but not everyone has the time or space for, unfortunately. 
I thought it was just kind of interesting what they were doing being a distributor of physical printed miniatures based in the USA. They've got a fair few miniature ranges listed on their site, including Piper Makes, Gear Guts, and Great Art Studio. They were all featured in the video, and can just be one way of getting your hands on those from an official source. They basically give the creators a cut of the profits. There are a few other sites with kind of similar offerings, though most of them are a little bit rough and ready at the moment. It does feel like it's a sort of early phase industry, but what I did find particularly interesting about them was that they're basically sort of making sprues for the miniatures out there, taking the printed models and basically arranging them so you could have them on a sprue to dispense, like this one that you can see here for Piper's miniatures, the aim being to use some very tiny supports so they're very easy to remove from the frame when they get to the person who's bought them. In any case, I thought that sharing them here could be kind of interesting to a few of you. Just quite a fun example of one way to get your hands on some 3D printed miniatures if you don't have access to a printer. I quite like the fun sort of sprue design that they're going for. Maybe resin trying to ape plastic a little bit. In any case, we'll leave that there for this one. I'll leave a link down to all those makers and creators down in the video description. A big thank you for reaching out to be featured. And of course, if there's anyone else who'd like to have their miniatures shared here on the channel, feel free to get in touch with me on Facebook or Discord or something. Also, of course, a massive thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring the video by sending out a 3D printer. Feel free to check them out, links down in the video description as well. As mentioned, it does appear that their 3D printers are 20% off currently. And it does seem to be at least a genuine sale this time compared with last time I made this video. A lot of their prices do seem to have gone down since then. Let me know your thoughts on any or all of the designs. Look forward to hearing any of your experience with them or other cool things about the miniatures down in the comments. I'll certainly look forward to having a read. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, feel free to subscribe. I'll certainly be cycling back to the topic of 3D printing from time to time. Should hopefully have the next update in the whole Iron Enforcers project in a few days time. And in the meantime, I'll be getting back to all my more regularly scheduled Warhammer 40k news and tactics content. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, then feel free to subscribe to the Auspex Tactics Patreon page. That one's linked down in the video description if you'd like to help keep all the videos coming. And there are a fair few perks, like seeing some certain videos early, regular entry into the prize giveaways that happen each month, and a few other things like your name down in the credits, and Discord roles and things like that. If any of that's of interest to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link's down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.